All right, so it has reacted for another hour and everything went pretty smoothly. The only uh, note of any consequence here that I will mention is that uh, you need to make sure that you have very heavy stirring throughout. And uh, I should have known this from making nitrobenzene in the past because after all, uh, toluene is nothing but phenylbenzene, or I'm sorry, methylbenzene. I don't know why I said phenylbenzene. Benzene is phenyl. Uh, anyhow, so uh, the reason why my temperature was not climbing too rapidly in the beginning uh, was actually due to the fact that my stir bar was not uh, sufficiently strong enough to stir the volume of liquid. So I ended up switching to a bigger stir bar and when I really got a good vortex going with that stir bar, the temperature spiked so rapidly that I had to literally just stop stirring, add a ton more ice, and then I actually had to pour some uh, uh, water on top of it that was um, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so uh, that would be what, about 12 C, somewhere in there. Um, and, uh, you know, I had to actually, obviously, wait for a while for the flask itself to cool down because I obviously just couldn't pour this right on top of it uh, because that would have just cracked the glass via thermic shock. Um, so it ended up being a really good thing that I did have my uh, reflux condenser on there because it came in handy. I hope that that did not ruin the synthesis. The temp didn't climb too high uh, before I realized it. Uh, however, I think it might reduce my yield somewhat. Um, and as you can see here, as I show you, when we were looking at this before, the bottom acid layer was almost completely clear. I mean, it was really crystal clear. And you can see now that it has taken on a yellow tinge to it. Uh, and that's really what we want. That lets us know that the acids have reacted. And we can also see now that the upper layer, which is our nitrotoluene, uh, has turned a nice, deep, brownish-red color. And that is exactly what we want. Uh, if any of you have a, made nitrobenzene in the past, you know, toluene is essentially just benzene with a methyl group attached to it. So they both have that uh, very pungent, um, I find it a quite pleasant smell, actually. Aroma, I guess, to be uh, precise. Um, anyhow, that's enough about all that. Uh, just keep in mind that you need to have... A very strong stirring going on throughout this process uh, so the next thing we need to do is separate this and wash it so I am going to uh, get it into my set funnel I have sitting there and uh, oh, we're gonna go ahead and separate it okay so I have added it to the set funnel and you can see that I am going to be decanting it into, I'm using an Erlenmeyer flask for this, and that is simply because I want to be able to take the stopper and stopper it off and save that for a later date when I am going to uh, redistill these acids so that I can, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, recover the acids that are in there, what did not get consumed in this reaction. Uh, and I was going to just let this separate out as it was. However, I can see there are some tiny little pieces that are kind of forming an emulsion. We want to get those out. There shouldn't be too much vapor in this because the, nothing in here really has too much of a vapor pressure to it. But venting is still... Always a very good idea. Good practice anyhow. 
There we go. Now we've got all of them. Now, if you're wondering why I set this glass dish underneath, it is simply because uh, a while back, um, this got heated, and right here, it actually cracked. So, it is being held together by Gorilla Glue, and Gorilla Glue is awesome. It withstands most anything. However, it is sitting in... Um, sulfuric acid and nitric acid right now two of the strongest acids any amateur chemist is ever going to be working with uh, and I did not quite know how it was going to hold up so if this happened to come apart I wanted to be able to collect everything in a bowl so I didn't just lose my whole entire reaction and uh, so that's why. So the bowl is entirely something I'm doing just because of my inferior equipment here. Um, if you're going to try the synthesis at home, it's not something you need to do. Now, uh, on that note, I guess, uh, in case we do have an accident here, I think I am going to throw some gloves on. I don't feel like getting sulfuric acid all over myself today. And uh, that'll give our uh, solutions a little while to separate out completely. Okay, got the gloves on, and this has separated out as much as I believe that it is going to. So, let's go ahead. Let's get our stopper off of there so we can actually drain this. And let's drain this off. Yeah, again, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I find the smell of uh, nitro aromatics just to be just so pleasant you you almost just want to drink this stuff it smells so good i mean of course that would not be a good idea uh you would most certainly die and at the very least suffer from extreme gastric distress but it does smell so good i mean it's almost like a a very spicy uh cinnamon type uh aroma I remember the first time I made nitro benzene, I just, I could not believe how good it smelled. Now well, we're getting down to it here. Yeah, you know, I am really impressed this Gorilla Glue has held up. I mean, knock on wood. And that is good. I do not want to allow any of the <clears throat> nitrotoluene to go through uh, because I am going to be redistilling this. Uh, it, it really would not matter too much, you know. I mean, I'm going to be fractionating this anyhow. However, uh, it's just one more impurity that I won't have to deal with. Okay, so. Cap up our acids for later use. And I fully realize that a rubber stopper is not ideal uh, when dealing with strong acids, but as long as I don't dump over my flask and allow the acids to come in contact with the stopper, I should be all right. So the next thing to do here is to wash this. And we need to do this a few times. Um, I think, uh, right off the bat, I'm just going to use some distilled water. Um, around 50 milliliters, I believe, would be sufficient here. Um, I'm not really, yeah, you know, I guess I should probably give it some kind of a rough measurement here. Instead of just going straight for my wash bottle. So, let's measure out. 50 mils. There we have it. Move this guy out of the way. I'm going to wipe 
this funnel out a little bit because this is the funnel that I used to pour in the entire solution. And at this point, it is not critical that I don't introduce any more impurities to it because that's the whole reason for this washing process is to strip a lot of the impurities out of it. But I do not want to be putting in any more than what is absolutely necessary. Okay, so we've got that. Set that aside. And we need to agitate this. So in goes the stopper. Shake and swirl. Vent. Shake and swirl some more. Vent. As a good practice, I have always heard that you should swirl and vent at least three times during every washing process. And I'm going to uh, be silent here and I'm going to bring this up close to the camera here so you guys might be able to hear the gases build up in here as they escape. Yeah, so there is some vapor pressure building up in there. And it is a very good idea to... Uh, vent it often because what will happen if you don't is you're literally going to end up uh, having your glassware explode on you and you know it is obviously uh, to state the obvious a horrible thing to have happen okay so we're going to need to wash this a few times and so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to prepare another, uh, yeah, I'd like to use 100 milliliters, but I want to use the same beaker, so uh, this beaker will probably take about 75 mils, so that's what I'm going to use for the next step. So I'll measure out 75 mils of water. Actually, you know what, I'm going to use that for the third step. This next step, I am going to uh, actually use some of this right here. As you can see, is sodium bicarbonate solution. That will neutralize a lot of the excess acids in there. And then I will move on to washing it more with water. So as you can see here, it is starting to separate already. So we're just going to leave this alone let it separate fully and then we will continue on with the next washing step okay so we have separated out as much as we are going to it has been standing for roughly 15 to 20 minutes so I'm going to go ahead and uh, filter off this aqueous layer here and move on to the next washing step. Uh, let's see what kind of beaker here. It's got a 500 mil beaker. That way, we're certain that we don't have to switch beakers again to accommodate the volume. Just lower this a little bit. Get our stopper out of there so we can drain it. And here we go. There it goes. All right, and I did, if you can see it on camera here, see all the little floaties in there. I did end up getting a little bit of our product in there. That is okay, I mean, that's probably like, oh hell, I don't even know, like less than a milliliter. It's probably half a milliliter or so. Okay, so the next step is the wash neutralization wash to take care of any acids we have in there and since I just had this in a wash bottle I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it into there 
as you see there's a lot of fizzing going on so it's all the CO2 being released letting us know that we do still have acid present in there so what I'm going to do is I am just going to continue adding this until the fizzing dies down completely and that will let me know that the acid that is uh, residual in there has been indeed neutralized I'm going to shake this up a little bit just to make sure that we are getting good contact with all of our product now since we can already see that we have a lot of CO2 gas yeah hear that being evolved here it's very important that you use frequent venting for this washing step and you can see just with the CO2 that is evolving out of there you know it's trying to push up any little residual moisture that's in the stopcock so you know, I can probably just swirl this like this and leave it open, honestly. Probably be the safest way to do this. Although it does sound so cool, though, when you release it. Yep. Alright, so this is going to take a while, I believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach this, I'm going to cut the video because you've already seen what this process looks like here and I'll come back once it is complete. 